approaching our first anchorage in the Bahamas. This is the little island of Mayaguana, one of the most remote of the islands, and it is very seldom visited. It also has a very tricky entrance here, um, and you absolutely need to have good light, you need to have the polarized sunglasses on, and uh, even still, it's going to mean dodging some coral heads as we come in. This looks like a beautiful place and a great start to a Bahamas cruise. Idyllic tropical destinations are on most cruising sailors' bucket list. While we're having our new boat built, we wanted to share with you some of our television shows about voyages we've made. In this case, our first visit to the Bahamas with our shallow draft southerly. Cheryl and I had been to the Bahamas before with our six-foot draft classic, and since then had wanted to come back and explore the shallowest areas. Thank you to Pantaneous Yacht Insurance, who have insured Distant Shores since 1996, and for their support, bringing you these Distant Shores classic videos. Okay, Mayaguana entrance. There's a big long barrier reef here that can really get, in, get us into trouble. There's breaking water all along the front. We have got to pick in between the narrow entrance here, and then once we get through that, it's only about six feet deep, so we're gonna have to pull the keel up. We've got it down for our uh, passage we've been doing from the Virgin Islands. So we're going to have to raise the keel right up and sneak in over here. Again, good light is essential. And man, look at the color of this water. So, landfall in the Bahamas, my iguana. For many people, the Bahamas is Nassau popular package tour and cruise ship destination, often confused with Bermuda and Barbados. But for cruising sailors and those seeking quiet natural surroundings, the Bahamas can be so much more. For sailors living on the east coast of North America, the Bahamas are the achievable paradise. The journey down the intracoastal waterway is a pleasant trip south and positions you to make a 50-mile sail across the Gulf Stream. Many people find the longer passages daunting, here is a subtropical destination that can be made in just day sails. And once you're there, you have reached one of the best cruising destinations in the world. Our voyage here has taken us all the way from England. We crossed the Atlantic in January and have traveled over 6,000 miles in four months as we arrive in the southernmost Bahamas. The Bahamas stretch over a similar area to the Caribbean Windward Islands, Leeward Islands, plus Puerto Rico combined so we're going to be doing some extensive cruising here. Most of the Bahamas is very sparsely populated and perfect for those of us interested in exploring small settlements and crystal waters. We're going to begin our cruise in the south, in the remote family islands of Mayaguana and Acklands Island. Welcome to Mayaguana. The pristine waters and shallow reefs surrounding Mayaguana make it a snorkeler's paradise. And we don't have to swim far from the boat before we find lots of interesting marine life. Here is a group of blue-headed race. No one has a blue head, you say? In fact, both the male and female blue-headed race are small yellowfish. This is a harem of females, and there is one larger male with the blue head. He chases away the smaller males to keep the females all to himself. But this is not like a traditional harem. In the event that the male dies, the largest female will turn into the next super male over the next few days, growing bigger and changing from yellow to the blue head configuration. The sandy, rocky area surrounding a reef doesn't look like it has much to interest the diver. Surely all the good animals are on the reef. But in fact, the sand is quite alive, including this little fellow called a yellowhead jawfish. They are quite shy, and most casual reef observers would miss them. They hide in a burrow when anything big comes by. He lives in the burrow and keeps it clean as well, tidying up the entrance by moving extra rocks and shell fragments just so. In fact, the jawfish has built the burrow from scratch, moving rocks and shell fragments to form a structure with a narrow entrance and large interior chamber. This is lined with sand, but he still needs to sweep up.
From the main harbour at Mayaguana, it's about 70 miles to Lovely Bay on Acklands Island. Acklands forms the eastern side of the Crooked Island District Triangle, which includes Crooked Island and Long Key. The bite of Acklands is very shallow, and we're going to beach our boat amongst the Lovely Bay Keys at the north end. The Bahamas consist of hundreds of miles of shallow waters. There are many protected spots where the sea and wind have carved channels and islands in the sand. But much of this is too shallow for the average cruising boat, and low tide would mean less than six feet of water was left to float in. These have not been noted in guidebooks since most boats can't go there. But for a boat that draws just three feet, there are many more anchorages. Our swing keel sailboat takes this one step further by allowing you to beach the boat in a place where there is just one foot of water at low tide, opening up many more cruising areas and anchorages. The Bahamas has an average tide between two and a half and four feet, so we can sneak into places with charted depths of just one to two feet. If we go in at medium or high tide, then there will be enough for us to float, and then we can sit on the sand at low tide. Here in the seldom visited Crooked Acklands group, most of it is sand like this that is less than three feet deep at low tide. This makes it perfect territory for the southerly and a great place to dry out. In this case, the channel is over 10 feet deep, but quite narrow with a bottom of rocks and coral, so we would have a hard time anchoring here, as well as being exposed to the currents. The plan here is to find a place on the edge of the channel and push up on the sand at medium tide. I've thrown out a stern anchor to use later to pull us off. Now we just beach the boat gently. It feels strange to deliberately run her onto the sand. Next I drop the keel down in the sand to be a temporary anchor, and then lower our main anchor using the remote control at the helm. Next, I will walk around to the bow and put out the main anchor. This is in the shallow sand and will hold us at high tide when the boat is floating. Our own private anchorage where I doubt anyone has anchored before. Well, we're trying to get a bit of a look around here. Obviously a bit of height like this means that we're able to see into the colors of the water here. Looking out in the back, you can really see you know, how deep it is and how shallow the water is that we're in right now. So we're gonna try and move the boat a little further in. There's just so many places we can go in these incredible shallow islands. The water is teeming with marine life, and much of the economy depends on fishing. One of the main exports is lobster, and right near the boat I find five lobsters under a coral head looking out at me, secure in the knowledge that from April through July lobster season is closed. I find a shark lying in a cave. This is a nurse shark, and although they can grow to 12 to 14 feet long, this fellow is smaller, 5 feet or so. Sharks are reputed to have very rough skin, and I can't resist the temptation to find out for myself. It does feel somewhat like sandpaper, and he feels quite muscly underneath. This whole area here, the whole north of Acklands, is not even on anybody's cruising itinerary. And in fact, the most popular guide for the whole Bahamas doesn't even list this harbor at all. Now, once we've got in here, there's miles and miles of beautiful lagoons. We've seen so much life and birds and everything here. 
We've just been using this sandbar as an anchorage for the night. We pulled onto it and now we're just going to pull back off. We've got the anchor which is going to pull us off and the keel which is really holding us in place. So as the tide is fairly low still, but it doesn't mean we can't get off. We'll just raise the keel up and I'm raising the keel as it pulls up out of the sand. We'll probably have very little draft now down to just two foot nine. And the keel's all the way up. I'm just going to go over and winch it in tighter here. So this is winching in on a stern anchor. We're sliding slowly back off. So this is perfect. We pulled the anchor up earlier, the big anchor off the bow. Now we've lifted the keel. It's our second anchor point and pulling in on the fortress. Now we're floating fine. I still haven't put the engine in gear. I'm just going to pull in the line so that we don't get it in the prop. and I'm going to collect it onto the back deck. Today it's a really light wind day. I can do this all myself. Cheryl's helping filming, so not helping sailing. Put the keel back down again a bit to give us some sideways uh, resistance. And I just collect the anchor line and pull us up toward it. So it just makes this whole area a whole lot more accessible. Really, I don't think anyone's probably ever anchored here. And there's a whole lot of places in the Bahamas that are like this. So if you're really into exploring, you want to find some gorgeous spots. It's a matter of looking at the chart and finding some places where it is shallow, protected from the wind so that you're not going to have wind driven waves coming in. It's protected from any seas, so you have a nice quiet place to beach the boat and um, just look for a gorgeous spot. I used Google Earth to find this because I say it's not in the cruise guides. I'll just bring it up and we can get underway. If you dream of sailing to tropical waters and live on the U.S. or Canadian East coasts, the Bahamas are the most achievable destination. Now that we're having a new shallow draft Southerly 480 built, we're planning another visit to the Bahamas. Thanks again to Pantaneous Yacht Insurance, who have insured Distant Shores since 1996, and for their support bringing you these Distant Shores classic videos. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, let us know in the comments if you're contemplating a tropical journey, and don't forget to subscribe for upcoming videos.